you have that vertical jump of that guy who in the NFL combine who, who squatted down really deep and he jumped really high. Yeah. And I was like, that is probably where the tendon is compliant. It's really extent. The patellar tendon is, mm-hmm. is extending a lot. And then you had that video of that Asian guy doing like a five foot drop jump. Oh yeah. And, and yeah. And then he, and then he hopped up real quick. And I was thinking, is that where the tendon's very stiff and it's not actually elongating much? Um, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm like this, it was just based off that paper though, because before I read that paper, I would have thought the drop jump would have been way higher extendability of the tendon mm-hmm. yeah. and the other jump would have not, but I'm, I'm just questioning that right now. Uh, or ever since I read that. So I'm like, I, I think it probably depends on the task. Like if you're doing that, that drop jump, like the Asian guy, you want the tendon to be super stiff versus if you're doing the deep bending jump, you want the tendon to be compliant. So it's probably depends on the, 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 what you're doing, the task you're doing, or it depends on the type of athlete. Like if you're a very stiff athlete, you probably want stiff tendons. If you're a very, uh, an athlete that, that wants to use big excursions of joint ranges of motion, you probably want the more compliant tendon. Um, and I kind of was looking at like Blake Griffin, Kobe, a lot of Vince, Vince Carter, these guys who are dunking at like 40 years old. Yeah. And it's like, sure. You could say that they had a bunch of injuries and they changed their jumping style. Cause when you have injuries, you don't want to bend as much and you don't want to bend your joints after you've been injured a ton of times, but they don't bend as much. Like they're, mm-hmm. they, they still dunk, but they're so stiff. Their knees don't bend as much. Their hips don't bend as much. Basically the, the knees. So like their patellar, ten- I'm thinking their patellar tendons are not as compliant and it, it makes sense to me because the IFM gel within the tendon, the fluid within the tendon, that's what keeps the tendon able to extend. And the IFM gel starts to dry up when you're like 30, 40. Yeah. So the tendon's going to stay stiff, but it's not going to be as extendable. So it's not going to be able to strain as much. So I would think everyone would adopt a more stiff uh, movement strategy. You can still dunk and you can still do the things you did before. You're just not going to be as, your tendons are just not going to be as extendable. So what does it mean for training? And I don't know. Like, how do you, how do you maintain the IFM gel? How do you extend extendability with the tendon? Um, I have no clue still mm-hmm. to this day. And I probably get it asked, I get it asked pretty frequently. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that answered your question at all, but I think it's, um, I think it depends. The stiffness and compliance thing is like, you look at a movement that's stiff. I think the tendon's stiff. You look at a movement that's more compliant or, or elastic. I think that's a more compliant tendon. I think that's what's happening. I, I might I might say the opposite in a week if I read something else. Yeah, it's interesting to think about what's going on, uh, I guess, externally. And when I say that, I mean, like, what's the ground contact time total? Like, is the sum of the whole system versus internally? Okay, every little joint, every rotation. Um, but I, I, what you're saying makes sense. I remember this was back when I was in graduate school. I was doing research for some project. And it one of my studies studies I cited was saying that in in sprinters versus slower to slower runners, that vastus lateralis or outer quad was more the tendon was more compliant. It then it, so you so more compliant tendon led to a faster. I mean, it wasn't because of that. It that was I'm sure the tendon just adapted, <laughs> you know, to whatever they were doing. But it makes sense. It's like big range of motion. You have you have watch that foot go and watch how much like you know, bend is happening when that heel comes up towards your butt as the leg cycles through. So that's obviously you have, if you have a really stiff tendon, you probably can't do that and get that power swing as the leg snaps down and then cycles down towards the ground. And so if you like just watch the leg of a sprinter, you see that range and extensibility. But then on the other hand, like an Achilles in, in a drop jump, it's probably got to be a lot stiffer for the most part. And I think Anthony Blazevich, I'm, I may have asked him that on the first podcast he was on, or it was a email I sent him. I forget. I, but I think he had said something similar because he had done, yeah, he's been doing research on that for a long time. It was something like to the tune of the muscles each have their own job and they're going to adapt um, as they should. But then, yeah, like you said, well, what does it mean for training? I mean, I guess the thought would only be, well, if I'm slow <laughs> and because I've thought about this with like stuff like oscillatory symmetrics at the muscle length and stuff like that. Well, if I'm slow, maybe some of these movers that have to go over a longer range should be more extensible. Like like maybe I should train like, you know, like lunge drops and stuff where my, you know, even like rear foot elevated like drops where you're having like that extensible range and stuff like that. So, but other yeah, than that, yeah. I don't know. You get what you train for, right? Like, so it's, I know. And then, and then you probably have the thing too, where it's like, 
do you want to train the opposite? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're exactly. like, if you're a stiff, yeah. If you're very stiff, like you, ha- if you, if you take forty year old Vince Carter dunking, do you want to keep doing stiff things? That's usually when you would do the more bigger range of motion with an older person to maintain like Hel- mobility or flexibility, yeah. you know. Or to keep him healthy, I guess, right? Because yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's just him going out probably and do, hey, go dunk. I mean, I'm sure he probably still plays and stuff, but I, would you, wouldn't you think if you're older and you do start to, you know, the tendons, the like Bill Hartman talks about, like the body starts to dry up. I, I hate that term. It's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm in my 40s now. So it's like, ah, but like, ah, it's like a nocebo if I actually think about it. But in terms of like Angus Ross had said this, that, as you get older, your stride length and in, in your stride rate in sprinting, your frequency stays the same. It's the stride length that decreases, which makes sense because, well, it just you could say it's the whole system. But if if the system's less hydrated and it's more stiff, and that includes the tendons, then it's kind of harder to you know throw that stride length out there. Yeah, 